Hey, what is going on guys? It's Tharshan. Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we have something pretty exciting for you guys as I am in the PvE of Rise to War and we're finally going to go over all the changes and stuff that is coming with it. So I'm really excited to actually announce this and to share this with you guys because this update is going to look pretty pretty cool if it comes to the live server as is or obviously with some changes to make it even better. But it's looking very very promising especially for the lower spenders and free-to-play players, which is something that Rise to War obviously definitely needs because, you know, the more uh, smaller players that stay in the game, the more active the game is, the more the bigger players are going to be spending. You know, it's a win-win situation for everyone. The, you know, the company makes more cash. The smaller players have a better time in the game. The bigger players have a better time in the game. And it's just an all-round win. So yeah, if you guys do enjoy this video, please do drop a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to turn on those post notifications. Anyway, let's get straight into it. So as I said, this PBE is showcasing a bunch of changes, mainly to commanders and stuff, but it's changes that are gonna affect the lower spenders and free-to-play players more than it will the, you know, the higher tier players. There's still some changes for the higher tier players. So those that do spend a lot, you know, can also get something out of it, but they are making it a lot more free to play friendly, which is not something I was expecting, honestly. And as someone who doesn't spend that much personally myself, this is a good change to see, you know, it's gonna uh, make me a little bit stronger in PVP, allow me to do a bit better and hold my own against all the mega whales. So. If we go over to commanders right everything looks the same for now but okay well besides me being in technically in a non-role play server because the pb is pbe is only a non-role play server but besides that right so if everything looks pretty similar but if i go over to a commander right for example you know these tier three commanders that i had right like elrond gandalf the white uh thrandil king of the dead Gilgalad, my Dane, who I just can't use because they're all level zero. I mean, well, R zero the level right now. They're 40 because of it being a PBE server, but respect wise, they were useless. All the skills were locked. Well, this is the first major change. They've changed the levels at which skills unlock. So you don't, well, before it was what? level uh, Respect level three to unlock your third skill and respect level five to unlock your final skill, they've changed it. So if we go over to skills, right, you'll see I do only have two skills open, which is Iron Foot and Lord of the Iron Ills. But Durin's Blood, I no longer need Dane at respect level three to unlock it. Instead, it unlocks at respect level two. And that is massive. Same for King Under the Mountain, which is his R5 skill usually. It now unlocks at respect level four now for those of you guys who don't realize how big this is it's actually massive because a lot of people right maybe you got a dane invite maybe you got some respect you got a bit lucky right so you have him at respect level three or should i say respect level two actually in this example but at respect level two you've only got access to iron foot and lord of the iron hills that's all the other two skills, Druin's Blood, which is a very important skill, by the way, for commander damage, and King Under the Mountain are both useless. You have Respect Level 2 Dane, so you basically can't choose him because you don't have his skills unlocked. Now, that all changes. Now, you're going to be able to run him with Iron Foot, which is a good damage skill, and with Durin's Blood, which is a very, very important damage skill. So you're going to be able to be that much more effective in combat. You're going up against someone else now with your R2 Dane, He's no longer just going to be Iron Foot, Lord of the Iron Hills with extra points into his Bloodline skill. It's going to be Iron Foot, Durin's Blood, and then, you know, maybe some extra points into Lord of the Iron Hills or whatever you want. So that is a really, really, really good change to see. And I'm extremely happy with that because outside of Galadriel, who I basically put every single piece of respect I ever got and every single ticket I ever got, you know, into like tier three, I have no other tier three commanders past like R1. And if I do, it's just because I got lucky and I pulled a second invite or something. So let's look. I have, I, do, I, this, do I actually have that many commanders? God damn, I have like basically all the good side commanders unlocked, but I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. They're all unlocked, but they're all useless. So 
Look at my lovely R0 tree beard. R0 Radagast. R0 Aragorn 2 King of Men. R0 Gil Galad. R0 Dane Iron Foot. And goddamn, do I need a Dane? Dane is freaking insane nowadays. Dane the insane. Yeah. Anyway, King of the Dead. R0. Thranduil. R0. Thorin. R1. I could actually make him kind of useful now because, I mean, I could run Oaken Shield, whatever. I could run Revivalist. But I could also run King of Druin's Folk if I really wanted because it's unlocks at Respect 2 and he's actually pretty close. I could probably get enough Respect to get him there in a season or so. So that's really nice to see. Same for Gun of the White. He's R1 only, but I could get him to R2 pretty soon, you know, be able to run White Council. As for Elrond, I mean, he was useless to me before. There was no way I was ever going to use him because he was R2. I had Lord of Imnadris only and half Elven. Now I could possibly use him, maybe even as a damage command. Well, actually, wait, mm, not a damage commander, but I could use him as a mix between damage and army buff because I could run Lord of Amladris or uh, with El with uh, Elf Lord and half Elven, or I could run half Elven plus Elf Lord, make him purely army. So hmm, it's interesting, interesting uh, choices I have. So yeah. This is the first major change that has come with the PBE. Commander respect levels and the respect levels required to unlock their skills have changed. Instead of uh, unlocking their third and fourth skills at respect levels three and five respectively, you now unlock them at respect levels two and four. So that is really, really cool. I absolutely love that change. Now, Another change, and this is pretty much the second big part of the PBE, is they've leveled out the gap between damage commanders and army buff commanders. So, you know, commanders that buff troops, commanders that lead troops, and all your damage comes from the troops themselves instead of the commanders. For the longest time now, they've basically been subpar. So your damage dealers, aka commanders that deal damage themselves, like Aragorn 2, McGill, uh, Galadriel, uh, Gimli for me, you know, those three commanders were my damage dealers. They were just outclassing any uh, army buff commanders. You know, if they were just so much better. And they're finally fixing it, or they're finally balancing it out now. And... Uh, they're making it, I think, so that the units actually scale with the commanders and stuff. You know, they, they're fixing the issue that that was there for the longest time. So my Gandalf the Grey, who is a army buff commander, as you can see, I built him for unit attack completely. And the skills I run on him is Mithrandir. I mean, White Council is a bit of everything, but, you know, I, I build him for army damage. He is going to be so much better now, all because of this update and I absolutely love it. So what they've done is they've changed a lot of skills that deal with troops. So if I go to any of my uh, Cav commanders, because you know they all are army buff. So basically my entire second formation of Theoden, Aomer, Eowyn and Emerhel, they all buff their armies. All the damage from their formations comes from their cavalry being buffed by their skills and their cavalry dealing all the damage. Now, if I go on Theoden and I look at his skills, they've changed it quite a lot. So uh, Rohirrim, you'll see it's got PBE next to it because the skill is changed here. They've changed it a bit, so I'm not going to read out every one. You can just have a look at it if you really want to. Uh, Horse Master, they've changed as well. And Air Red Leader, they've changed as well. So they've changed all the skills. They made uh, a lot of them like... Let's see, when mounting three allied for me deal damage, attack plus five stacks over three, attack stacks four times, and then they gave a unit damage buff of plus 10%, which is pretty solid. So they've changed a lot of the skills themselves, you know, to make them better for uh, troops. So they've changed a lot of the skills to buff troop damage, basically, and make troops a bit more survivable, you know, if it wasn't a damage skill. But... There's also another thing they've done to equalize the damage dealer and the army buff commanders. And if I go over, for example, to my Galadriel, right? And I click on a respect thing, you'll see, so skill points, 80, blah, 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 level cap, damage, all of that. But there's a new stature and that is unit damage. This says unit damage plus 15%. Damage of the commander's formation unit. Damage dealt by the commander's formation unit increases by 15%. 
increase the damage dealt by the commander's formation unit. And you're like, okay, how does that buff army buff commanders? You know, Gladriel's a damage dealer, but her units are not going to do more damage. Well, I have no buffs for those units. Those units are just there as tanks. Usually, okay, well, because it's PBE, I'm just messing around and throwing March Wardens on her. But usually she'll just be running some Guardians or some sort of tanky, shieldy units. You know, they wouldn't be dealing that much damage. Instead, this is really, really going to affect the commanders that do deal in... Uh, but, oh, well, I can't see this because I need to ascend him, but... Any commander that deals in army damage, so for example... Uh, you know, I have the perfect example. Gilgalad, right? And one of my friends who used to be in my fellowship, he switched uh, recently, but he has a pretty mean Gilgalad. Well, there's actually quite a few really good Gilgalads in my fellowship, but he was always really, 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 really annoyed that his Gilgalad was just, you know, not on par with a damage dealer commander. But now that's all going to change. Why? Because he his Gilgalad now is going to be dealing plus, well, not dealing, but his Gilgalad is going to be giving his troops plus 15% damage. And so the way this buff works, as you can see, there's no buff over here because he's R0. But, you know, for her who's R10, this plus 15%. So the way this unit damage buff works is, I think it's at respect level 5, you get a 5% damage unit damage buff. At respect level 7, I believe it is, you get a plus 10% unit damage buff. And then at respect level 9 and above, you get the cap of 15% more unit damage. So this is pretty, pretty significant. Yes, there's a small change for, you know, the damage dealer commanders. Their units are going to be doing 15% more damage, but that's not going to be that much more damage because none of your gear, none of your skills is focused on units. Instead, for those commanders that do focus on units, for example, my Theoden, who's literally got three skills that are all focused on buffing and making his unit stronger, whose gear is all about unit attack. Okay, well, technically I have very crap gear for him, but you know, for those guys that have a whale Theoden or something, or, you know, whaled uh, army buff commanders, all their gear, all their skills, everything is focused on his on their armies. And now their troops are gonna be doing 15% more damage so long as they're above respect level nine. So that is absolutely massive. So that is pretty cool to see. Uh, they're finally buffing it out. Not the greatest change for me personally, considering my main formation is this. <laughs> Three damage dealers and one army buff commander. So yeah, not, not the greatest change for me personally. But in general, for the majority of players who do actually use troop uh, damage commanders, you know, army buff commanders, this is a very good change. You know, they finally bring in the army buff commanders on par with the damage dealing commanders another thing that they've actually changed before we end stuff is they've changed fellowship sizes so if i create a fellowship right i am not creating a fellowship i have to actually spend my gems if i look to join a fellowship you'll see all these fellowships do you see anything guys okay if you haven't seen it yet the number of members is 200 look at this panda 200 out of 200 members that is actually crazy you know why because that means if you want to um work together you know with people or, or for whatever the reason is you are now going to be able to fit nearly an entire faction of people in one fellowship so if you were having issues right and you uh, you know, you wanted to fill a faction, but you know, you filled your team up, you had a hundred people in your war band or your fellowship, and you know, now you had to turn away others and you had to say, okay, go form a second team or go join these guys and come try join us, you know, something like that. There was just a lot of headache, a lot of hassle. That's no longer a thing. Well, I mean, maybe because I think factions can hold like 250, 300 people depending, so maybe a couple of people still, but overall, you can basically fill your whole faction with your team. So you can get all 200 people that you want in your team, get them into your faction, have a full active faction, and it's gonna be great. So I absolutely love this change. You know, 
if it wasn't if this was a thing before we probably wouldn't have gotten separated from our friends in lion in the first place why because we could have just joined them we'd have had all 200 people in lion boom we all would have been pulled into our server together there wouldn't have been any issues with registering or any of that stuff but yeah that is uh, gonna end the video here as you can tell i am pretty excited i should have actually hopped onto the pbe earlier i just had stuff getting in the way irl that you know ended up delaying me hopping in but glad i finally did because these changes are amazing especially for the lower spenders and the free-to-play players and yeah, it's a step in the right direction for the game. So I hope you guys do enjoy the video. And if you did, please do drop a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.